Poor Laserbeak, the tiniest Decepticon and the character we keep forgetting. He's named for a reason, but remains to be seen as merely an extension of Soundwave. Not that he minds it, for we will never hear a peep from him when we get more words and emotions from Soundwave himself. And he most certainly is alive, with his own thoughts and feelings kept hidden, and he is someone worth saving. What's that? Soundwave surveillance drone, laser beak. Ratchet's not so accurate quote is how most of the Transformers Prime cast regard Laserbeak, and worse, how the viewers regard him. Only until recently, I was caught up in this trap. We see the imposing figure of Soundwave and watch him launch Laserbeak to aid him, and instead of admiring Laserbeak, we only admire Soundwave more for having his companion. He carries out Soundwave or Megatron's every command often acting as the camera and fulfilling the surveillance duty that the Autobots know him for. Indeed, there is no lie that- Laser beak is the eyes and ears of Soundwave. Yet a drone implies something lifeless and robotically controlled. Let's take a look at what I consider to be Laserbeak's most important episode. For in it, Laserbeak is the main subject, and the views of all the characters are revealed the most. This is Season 2, Episode 14. Triage. Wheeljack and Ratchet embark on a mission to capture a relic when they are attacked in the sky by Soundwave. Soundwave entrusts Laserbeak to continue attacking them while he goes to track down the relic. The moment this happens, the Autobots begin to speak about Laserbeak. Instantly, Ratchet uses what I dare say to be a discriminatory term for a Cybertronian being, but not out of malice. Throughout the episode, both he and Wheeljack are going to mostly refer to Laserbeak as it instead of him an inanimate pronoun versus inanimate. Highly interesting, considering that they continue to use Laserbeak's name. More than a drone, more than even a Viacon, Laserbeak has a name to be called. Even Smokescreen knows it. Peeled some paint off Laserbeak. Yet the Autobots are only dimly aware of his autonomy, with Ratchet seldom saying he. He's gone. Wheeljack does say... Took on that, con. Recognizing that he is Decepticon aligned, yet he also uses these terms. His little birdie would still be pecking at our tailpipes. Sooner or later, Soundwave's gonna come looking for his pet. Of course, Wheeljack is the type of character to insult, yet his sole use of it reveals that he does not see Laserbeak as a fellow Cybertronian. Not anymore, it isn't. I already spoke of the Autobot treatment of Viacons, an unfortunate but understandable lack of consideration for the clones. So we might be very surprised to see this inconsideration coming from Autobots, or from Ratchet, someone who is checking the vitals of someone, as he would anyone else, yet still ignorantly using the term it. However, the crash clearly damaged its optic and audio receptors. This is a combination of two things, Laserbeak's commitment to Soundwave and his very race itself. Soundwave used to be Megatron's right-hand bot. He's a technical and tactical genius. Plus, Soundwave has a minicon named Laserbeak. Laserbeak is a deployer minicon, which means a minicon Cybertronian who has willfully bonded themselves to another Cybertronian. And he's not the only deployer minicon of Soundwave, for he used to have four attached to him, Laserbeak, Rumble, Frenzy, and Ravage. While Soundwave also worked with hundreds of others, who would crawl over him or scatter across Cybertron to serve him. Laserbeak may be the only surviving one left, loyally serving him in silence. He spends almost every second of his life with Soundwave, present in nearly every episode. Everything that is being said, Laserbeak hears. Laserbeak and Soundwave are connected, with Soundwave able to command him through their minds. Not because Laserbeak is technology that Soundwave can control, but because Laserbeak is a very unique Cybertronian, much like Soundwave is. Transformers Prime talks about Cybertronian memory and learning abilities. They're not computers that can download information. They have to learn it naturally like us humans, or else it damages their brains. On the other hand, Soundwave is able to download information and upload it. He's a very unusual Cybertronian who can store information on drives, and it seems that Laserbeak is the same way. These are two Cybertronians who can easily access technology and steal information, and their abilities let them communicate to each other, likely through the medium of the warship's technology. The special ability to connect to technology is why Laserbeak has a transponder, 
something that automatically picks up signals from the warship and sends out its own. Also, this is exactly why Ratchet says they can get information from Soundwave by opening up his head, when all other episodes use the cortical psychic patch or torture. Soundwave is no ordinary Cybertronian, inside or out. So I would strongly suggest opening him up so we can have a first-hand look at the information recorded on his drives. Soundwave is, however, the mastermind. He is the one intelligent enough to decode, hack, and organize. Laserbeak recognizes this and greatly respects him. Soundwave is the one who will kick ass and get the job done, so he is the one Autobots fear. But what if Laserbeak were different? If he spoke, showed facial emotions, would he be mentioned more often? If he were the size of Starscream instead of being a Minicon? Of course, Soundwave did not speak and show facial emotion, yet he was still treated as a Cybertronian. It is, I believe, Laserbeak's Minicon status that makes him so easy to ignore. We do actually see such Minicon racism in the line continuity, unfortunately, among the Autobots especially. Not to say that the Autobots think they deserve to die or hurt, but it is a subtle racism that they have not noticed and mended. Minicon racism is just common among average Cybertronians regardless of faction. They are much smaller and lived often far apart from the rest of society, on the moon Luna 1. The average Cybertronian would be surprised by Minicon, think they are weaker versions of themselves, tools, not grown bots to be treated with respect. Question, how many Minicons does it take to disarm a high energy pulse generator? We heard that! It was most insulting! Directing your jokes toward the three of us grows tiresome. Oh, you little guys are so cute when you get offended! Minicons struggle as a group to be taken seriously by larger Cybertronians and can be overshadowed by their masters if they choose to bond to someone. Conversely, the bots who choose to bond with Minicons usually have a better understanding of them and will know their individuality. Unless they're just destructive Minicons bonding with evil Decepticons just to cause chaos. So how are Minicons expected to gain respect when we see a whole slew of animalistic ones it's no wonder your average Cybertronian, even Autobots, may see Laserbeak as pet. But now that the Decepticons on the Nemesis never once call Laserbeak it, they have worked with Soundwave and Laserbeak long enough to know. Something substantial is that Ratchet calls Laserbeak it, while Starscream, a known racist, does not. Now he would be the type to underestimate Minicons just as he does humans. However, he still easily calls Laserbeak a he. For even if he dislikes Laserbeak, he still knows Laserbeak is sentient and not a drone or animal. Because Laserbeak's frequency has been detected on radar. But that's not possible. He's right here in Soundwave's torso. It isn't said just to please Soundwave. Starscream is always insensitive about his racism and does not filter himself even in dangerous situations. Let's face it, if Starscream is going to say something racist, nothing is going to stop him. Everyone in the room just acknowledges that Laserbeak is alive, not a drone. But when Laserbeak comes to spy on Starscream, he addresses Soundwave through him because ultimately, Soundwave is the one who will attack him if he sees Starscream hurting Megatron. Soundwave, if you are listening, I have found Lord Megatron, and he is unwell. We must transport him to sickbay immediately. I also found it interesting that when Laserbeak was hurt, Megatron was present for the medical examination. What for? Megatron does view Laserbeak as valuable, even though he does not treat him with concern just as he would with the other troops. Had Soundwave gotten injured, it would have been a huge deal in itself. However, when Laserbeak is burned, Megatron is primarily upset because RC escaped and they cannot see which direction she fled. So the Decepticons know Laserbeak is alive while the Autobots forget it, but they do not care for him, just about what he offers them. Soundwave, on the other hand, does care about Laserbeak and does not merely keep him for his usefulness. It may not seem that way, when Soundwave is such a character who focuses on getting the job done, yet he is secretly emotionally driven and cares only about two others, Laserbeak and Megatron. Soundwave respects the Decepticon cause, but he follows Megatron and trusts him no matter what. Abandon Megatron? Never gonna happen. 
He turns against the new second in command. He never questions Megatron, patiently listens to him, and protects him by reporting any suspicious activity on Starscream's end. And how the sound wave gets stuck on Earth in the Shadow Zone? He does not remain on the warship. When Megatron's body fell, Soundwave was so distraught that he followed it, although he could not catch him. What's he doing down on this planet? Maybe he followed Megatron back to Earth, then got stuck here when Megatron left. Perhaps Laserbeak's surveillance job could be managed by creating a drone or using the satellites and cameras of Earth. But Laserbeak is a living Cybertronian with a spark, and if he dies, he can't be rebuilt. We know how much Soundwave focuses on the mission. Here, he could have killed Wheeljack and rid Megatron of an Autobot, and give him the relic. That would have been a huge win, and it only would have taken two seconds to finish the Autobot, but Soundwave is so concerned by Laserbeak's call for help that he does not even take that risk. He stops for nothing in case those precious seconds cost Laserbeak his life. People have been calling him, like, Papa Soundwave for how he just drops everything to save him. It was a good thing that the blaster was attached to his arm. Soundwave really rushed off, so it must have been a rare distress signal from Laserbeak that really had him worried. Had it been a choice between one relic and saving Laserbeak, saving Laserbeak would be higher on this list if he really thought Laserbeak was helpless. And with a spark comes emotions. Shockwave, Soundwave, and Viacons express fear, and I believe that in this scene, Laserbeak was frightened. He woke up injured and pinned by an Autobot, weakly struggling to escape. Knowing his fear may have strengthened Soundwave's reaction, since Laserbeak did not alert Soundwave when he had earlier been shot. Laserbeak is a great asset as well, but only Soundwave may truly know that. After all, everyone else just gives all the credit of Laserbeak's achievements to Soundwave. Let's acknowledge him now. He shot down and captured Fowler on his own. Laserbeak is nimble and brave, and has even taken down Optimus. We know that Soundwave could kick Arachnid's ass, but Laserbeak was part of the fight we saw, and we never remark on Laserbeak's assistance. When Shockwave and Soundwave fight the Autobots, we never mention Laserbeak in the fray. When the Decepticons locate the Autobot bases, Soundwave receives all the credit, when in actuality, it was Laserbeak's tiring hours of searching and flight. Soundwave may have sent out Laserbeak, but Laserbeak was the one who discovered the Autobot bases with his own optic, twice. He rescued Soundwave, restored his files, and taught him of their new objective, capturing Ratchet. If a job gets done, Laserbeak will never get the credit. It's always seen as Soundwave sent him out with directives, so Soundwave is responsible for the victory. He is just seen as Soundwave's tool. So now consider this quote. Wheeljack, maintain pursuit. Soundwave is merely using the drone to distract us. This line disrespects Laserbeak's individuality and capability. In comparison, imagine how wrong it would sound if Starscream was attacking the ship and Ratchet said, Megatron is only using the jet to distract us. Fortunately, Laserbeak is not the jealous type much like Soundwave. For them, getting a job done matters more than individual grievances. It is not clear if Laserbeak can talk but just chooses not to, or if he can just not talk at all. But since he is bonded with Soundwave, their mentality is the same. Bragging is pointless, even detrimental to missions. You go in, you do what you have to, because fooling around causes you the mission. Laserbeak does not mind being considered as an extension of Soundwave because he highly respects Soundwave. Soundwave is a great master, thus Laserbeak chooses to become his deployer minicon. Imagine being Soundwave, having more than a cat on your shoulders, but a person with you at all times, who completely understands you, who you can always trust, who will never bother you, and who calmly rests with you. These two have been through a lot together. Laserbeak may even have judgmental feelings against Starscream, but he would never hate Soundwave for getting his credit, and Soundwave would never gloat. Soundwave always holds Laserbeak with consideration, gently, and supporting his weight. If he is injured, he likes to be the first one to treat him, unless something peculiar seems to be wrong with Laserbeak. Soundwave is far different than the other characters for his consideration of Minicons. He always has been an individual disgusted by discrimination and selfish actions, which is why he politically sided with Megatron in the first place. Soundwave is not a racist. 
Even if he hates you as an enemy, he will not hold your race against you. He does not behave any differently around Insecticons, he never causes harm to the Vehicons, and he never underestimates his opponents, because that would be a foolish mistake. He takes humans seriously, and takes extreme measures to stop them, and he fully prepares himself against all opponents, even those half his size. He only gets a mini section to himself. Even the zombies get more than- Well, did any of the surveillance data survive? <sighs> a shame. We might have at least learned the direction in which R.C. and the human fled. If you are looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. <laughs>